Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see some faces we haven't seen in a while. The newly um, wed couple and the couple in the back. We haven't. We've been missing y'all, and it's good to have y'all back with us. We thank God for everyone that has decided to come and join us today because you didn't have to be here. You could have gone somewhere else. And I don't know if y'all know, but as a church body, we fast um, the beginning of the year. We do a corporate fast. It's never too late to join. And um, we started on the 8th, but uh, everything is on our website, the, um, the link to devotionals if you want to join us. And the fast is between you and God. It's like giving something up, emptying yourself out for God to, to have more of God in you. Okay, that's really the purpose of a fast, to become closer to him and to get rid of some of that stuff that, you know, that, that we accumulate along the way. I'm going to read to you um, scripture from Ephesians 3, 14 to 21. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which possesses, passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God, now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worked in us. To him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and forever. Amen. Amen. Now, what Paul was talking about, he's desperate that God fills every part of his body, every part of his mind, body, and spirit. But in order for us to be totally filled, we have to empty ourselves. So what are we full of? Are we full of pride? Are we full of unforgiveness? Are we full of um, self-dependence? Are we full of arrogance? Are, are we full of what, what kind of sin is besetting us? This is a good time to reflect, renew, and refocus during this time of year. And we're praying even if you don't fast from anything, just do the devotional. It will help you. It will strengthen you. You know, you know I know we've all gone through so much in the last year. And you know what? This year is no different. We're going to continue going through, but only through the grace of God. And by trusting and believing in him, resting in him, that's the only way that we're going to stay strong. Amen. And I pray that, um, that you would be blessed today beyond measure. I thank God for uh, the hearers, the doers, and the, um, the readers of his holy word. He's going he's gonna to do a song for Come on, church. May you stand with us, please, if you don't mind. I'm thankful and I give all praise and honor to God this morning. I wouldn't have it no other way in my life without praising and worshiping God. He's my all in all. He's my everything. So, my song is, we come a long way, Lord, a mighty long way. We come a long way, Lord, a mighty long way. We, 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 we come a long way.
Come a long way, a mighty long way. Yeah. This morning I'll be reading scripture coming from John, the 13th chapter, verses 3 through 5. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hand and that he was come from God and went to God, he rises from supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. After he, after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. May God bless the reader, the hearer, and most of all the doers of his holy word. Thank you. what I long for Holiness is what I need Holiness Holiness is what you are for me Righteousness Righteousness is what I long for. Righteousness is what I need. Righteousness, righteousness is what you need from me. So take my heart. What you want yes. for me. Yes, Lord. Yes. Holiness. Holiness. Yes, Lord. That's what I long for. Holiness. 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 Yes, Your holiness, yes. Father God. Yes. Oh, hell yes. more high God. Father God, as I stand before the presence of your congregation, Father God, as I decrease, you increase your spirit in this house today. Increase your spirit in our pastor, 
as he prepared to preach your profound gospel to your people. Father God, we all have an ear and let it be a listen to your word as he preached your gospel. Father God, in the name of your son Jesus the Christ, we ask in you, Lord God, and humble as we can be. Hear our cry. Hear our call, Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, I ask you to be every minister on the roster here today. Even in the pulpit, out of the pulpit. Bless them, Father God, that they would go preach your gospel to this lost world today. Father God, we need your help. United States of America needs your help. Your people need your help. Father God, we have so many people is sick among us. So many of us have lost loved one on their journey of life. But Father God, nevertheless, if anybody know how to come for us, it is your daughter, son, Jesus. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for the blood that he shed. Because we're going to take a very important thing today, the community. Father God, we ask you for forgiveness of all our sin. Even the one we think about sinning. But Father God, we ask your son Jesus to bring it to your throne of mercy and grace. We thank you again, Father God. We thank you. We thank you. And we give you all praise, honor, and glory. In the mighty name of your precious son, Jesus Christ, we all say amen, amen, amen. Thank y'all for joining us in the devotion service. Now we turn it over to the choir.
From my head down to my toe. Oh, Jesus. Hey, yeah. He's the real. Amen. Amen. Jesus is real. Yes. For I can feel him yes. in my soul. Yes. I can feel him all over. Yes. I can feel him. Yes. And so therefore I know yes. he is real. Yes. You never know just how real until you start to experience things in your life. And so I know he's real. I knew he was real, but I know he's real now. He's shown itself mighty, powerful, loving. Caring, yes. just an all around good God. Yes. And for that, you, I say thank you. Yes. I praise his name, yes. for he is worthy yes. of all of my praise. Yes. And he's worthy of all of your praise as well. Amen. Whether you prayed, sent a dish, a beverage, thoughts, love, hugs, and kisses, it was your love that helped us through this time of grief. We thank each of you for everything you have done during this time, and not one thing goes unnoticed. Remember us as we get used to life without our dear loved one. Blessings to you, the family of Mr. Eugene J. Dito Sr. Coming from the Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church, on behalf of Macedonia Missionary Baptist Church family, we cordially invite your church family to our pastor-elect Reverend Kimball Otis installation service to be held on the second Sunday, January 14th at 3 o'clock p.m. The installation messenger will be Dr. R- Ramonda D. Barnes of past the pastor of St. John Baptist Church, Gulfport. We will be truly blessed with your presence to share with us on this great occasion. Amen. What church is that? 
Macedonia and Waveland. Coming from First Missionary Baptist Church, Hansboro. Let the people of God rejoice and let the church say amen. Nehemiah 8 and 6. The members of First Missionary Baptist Church, Hansboro, Gulfport, Mississippi, proudly invite you to join as we celebrate the installation of our pastor, Reverend Jeremy T. Turner, Sr. We rejoice that the Lord sent our new pastor to lead our congregation, and we are looking forward to celebrating this occasion as the family of God. We will celebrate this blessed occasion through worship and with God's word. Your presence will make this event a memorable experience for Pastor Jeremy Turner Sr., his family, and First Missionary Baptist Church congregation. Installation highlights. Beginning Thursday, January the 18th at 6.30 p.m., our services will begin with a worship service. Pastor Harry L. Toussaint and the Goodwill Missionary Baptist Church will be our guests. Friday evening, January the 19th at 6.30, our very own First Missionary Baptist Church Mass Choir will host a musical tribute to our pastor and family. On Saturday afternoon, January the 20th at 5 o'clock p.m., we will have a banquet <coughs> at the Lyman Community Center in honor of pastor and family. We have invited your pastor and wife of the Gulf Coast District Association to join us for this celebration at the Lyman Community Center. Sunday morning at 10 a.m., will be Reverend Harvey Jean Johnson, Associate Minister Oak Grove Baptist Church from Evans, Georgia. At 3.30 p.m., the installation service will take place. Our guest speaker will be the General Missionary Baptist Association President, Reverend Reginald M. Buckley, pastor of Cade Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, Jackson, Mississippi, will be the guest speaker. We look forward to you sharing with us during our celebration of our pastor and family. Amen? Amen. And then New Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church is having their pastor anniversary banquet and Sunday program. First, giving thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Greetings, pastor, officer, and congregation. Happy New Year. We, the pastor's aide, extend an invitation to our upcoming pastor anniversary banquet. For ticket information, um, you can see Deaconess Sandra Spann. This will be held on January the 26th, 2024, 6 o'clock p.m. at the Great Southern Club, Gulfport, Mississippi. Ticket information, $50 per adult, $25, 11 to 18 years of age, $10, 10 and under. Amen? Some in-house announcements. Bear with me. All right. We started our corporate fast on January the 8th, but it's not too late to start. It's not too late to join. For, for a time of consecration and devotion, you can join us. The devotions are amazing, and we can send those to you by text, or you can download them from our website. Amen. Amen. The ushers ministry will have an organizational meeting th today, immediately after service. So if you are looking to be a part of the ushers ministry, you can contact Sister Peggy Johnson, for she says, coming from the book of the 84th Division of Psalms, I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of the Lord than dwell in the tents of the wickedness. Amen. 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 And then the city of Christian will honor my mother, Mrs. Mary Bowser, with a proclamation on Tuesday, January the 16th at the city council meeting at 6 p.m. if anyone is interested in attending. Amen. 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 We here at Goodwill, um, by way of Gone Fishing Ministries, will have a food distribution on Monday, January the 22nd. 
at 10 a.m. until noon or until the food is gone. It's going to be held here at Goodwill Missionary Baptist Church. You travel south from North Street, enter the parking lot on the right to receive a box and exit south. There is only one box per car, and it is first come, first serve. Amen. Amen. That's truly a blessing. Yes. Um, we see about the distributions in other cities, other towns. But it's coming here to Pass Christian. Amen. Amen. To serve our community. Yes. Amen. Our first quarterly business meeting will be held Saturday, January the 28th at 10 o'clock a.m. We're asking all auxiliary chairpersons that can be present to be present. If not, please send a representative. The youth department is asking all students who made honor roll to turn in your names to Sister Sonia Ashley by this Thursday. Amen. Amen. And they're also asking for volunteers for the food distribution. So if you're able to help um, that day, please see Sister Lillian Fields. I mean, I'm sorry, Tucson. <laughs> <laughs> um, or Sister Sonia Ashley, amen. amen. Excuse me. <laughs> Just want to remind you of ways to give. Um, if you are in-house worshiping with us on this morning, you can um, drop off your tithes and offering in the sanctuary, um, in the tithing box back by the sanctuary door. You can raise your hand and one of the ushers will come by and um, pick up that tithes and offering from you. You can mail them to P.O. Box 292, Pascasham, Mississippi, Visit our website at www.gmbcpc.org or cash at the church at dollar sign GMBCPC292. Amen. Amen. We do want to continue to keep our bereaved families in our prayers on this week and then also our suck, sh sick and shut in. Yeah. Amen. 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 And then our track team is traveling to Birmingham. And so we want to keep them in our prayers on today as they travel, um, that they would be safe, injury-free, and also have a good showing there. Right. Amen. The Smith Family Singers presents their 43rd year anniversary. The theme, Let all the people praise thee, Psalm 67. This will be held on January 27th at 4 o'clock p.m. at the Guiding Light Missionary Baptist Church in Socher. The um, guest speaker will be Apostle Cordero Pittman. And there are several special guests that my eyes can't seem to... <laughs> see everybody let's see here the rising stars of mobile divine purpose mississippi gulf coast god's children um, anointed gospelettes of laurel and the joy girls of mobile alabama All right. All right. Amen. amen the smith family yeah, yeah, yeah. january 27th that's kevin's family yeah. amen, amen. This is the high school um, track team that's traveling to, to Birmingham. <laughs> Amen. Um, do we have any first time visitors that would like to stand and be recognized on today? I do see a lot of familiar faces and it's so good to see you on this morning. I do not see any first time visitors and so we want to just experience God on today. Amen.
to know him. to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will, I will, I will give you rest. Amen. Take your, take my yoke upon you. That's what he says. He says, my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Amen. Amen. I'm not talking about coming to church. Amen. I even talking about coming to the church house. Amen. Because there's no salvation in the church house. But there's salvation in Jesus Christ. I'm going to turn it on. 
Amen. Amen. There's no hope in people. The only hope you'll find is in knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. But you have to come. Amen. You have to come. Let's try this one, Larry. Won't work. It's okay. Can everybody hear me? Yes. That's all that matters. Our system, we're getting a little work done, so we'll get it straight. Amen. We'll get it straight. Now, I've, I've asked everybody who can to get one. You got one? You got one? Amen. All right. Look at our text for this morning. It comes from the gospel according to John, chapter 13. Amen. John, chapter 13. And I don't know if you got it, Larry. Amen. Verses, uh, and my waist has gotten a little bigger than it was at first. I thought, I thought I could do that, but I don't know. All right. Amen. Watch this because now here's what I'm going to ask you to do. And those of you who don't have one, and Lillian, we're going to have to take these towels and put them up somewhere. So, and I want to ask everybody to do this. Now watch what I'm saying. I won't preach this sermon according to the way the Lord has given it to me. But I'm going to put this towel aside and never use it again. Amen. Amen. <laughs> and the one that you get today is the way you think about you. Put it somewhere like you would almost put it in a frame. All right. So that it would be a reminder of what the towel actually represents. All right. Now, excuse me, those of you who don't have one, don't feel bad. Okay? Just pick you one later on. And I'm hoping for when I get through with this message. You will do what I've asked everybody else to do. You will have you a special towel in your house to never be used for, for wiping off yourself or anything else anymore. But it reminds you of what the towel actually represents. Okay. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Look at the text, if you would, this morning. It comes from John chapter chapter 13 verses 3 through 5 Jesus knowing that the father had given all things into his hand and that he had come from God and was going to God rose up from rose from supper and laid aside his garment All right. took a towel and girded himself right. help me holy ghost yes. now i want to go a little farther cuz i think and i'm sorry larry i didn't do it but I want to go as far as verse, I want to go into verse 5, if you would. Listen to what it says. He got it up. Thank you, Larry. After that, he poured water into, into, into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. All right. This morning's set sermon title is The Testimony of a Towel. Right. And I don't know if November the 18th means more to somebody else than it does. Is, is 18th of November meaning anything to somebody besides Robert and Portia? It does. Congratulations. 
Amen. See how I remember that? All right, all right. Of course, now that's also my mother's and father's anniversary. So congratulations to you all. This is an important message that I want everybody to remember. Actually, the towel you're wearing should be somewhat of a memorial, a symbol of what God actually, help me, Holy Ghost, called you to be. I'm about to say to do, but it goes beyond doing. It, it, it's about what we're to be. Amen. Uh, Dr. Sammy Sandy F. Ray served as pastor of the Cornerstone Baptist Church in New York City for 31 years. Dr. Ray published one book. Through the journey, the journeying through a jungle in 1979. Before the book could go into press, the Lord called Dr. Sandy Ray home to be with him. Dr. Ray had some of his most profound messages in that book. All right. One of which is entitled Journeying Through uh, entitled Testimony of a Towel. Now I had the book and some years ago I preached the message here at the chapel. I had it in my files on my old computer. Okay. But somehow, Pastor Timmy, I lost the book. Oh my God. And my old computer crashed. <laughs> but early last week, the Lord woke me up and told me, Harry. I want you to preach the testimony of a towel. And he said, I want you to ask, and I'm a, I, I, I must apologize because I need all of you to understand the significance of a towel. Yes. And how important the symbol is in your ministry. Don't sit there thinking that because you're not sitting up here that you don't have a ministry. And if you hadn't, help me, Holy Ghost, if you hadn't found out exactly what your ministry is, then when you go home tonight, I want you to have a long talk with the Lord. God didn't send you here to sit down and watch us like we on TV. God called you and saved you because he wants you to be about his business. There aren't any spectators or any cheerleaders in the body of Christ. Everybody got a place on the playing field. I'm going to cut it off. I'm going to cut it off. I want to make sure you hear me. Amen. My waist is bigger than my towel. Okay. This one? Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. good. Somebody helping me here. And I'm also finding out that if, if my mics don't do me good here, they'll help somebody on Facebook. So let me preach in here this morning. Amen. 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 So, so we want to talk about the testimony of a towel. What, 
Why would Jesus, Lord and Master, go into a room where foot washing wasn't of a necessity? All right now. It was something that was normally done, but Jews don't wash Jews' feet. Help me, Holy Ghost. It had to be a Gentile slave. Yes, that's right. But, but when Jesus gave his disciples instructions about what to do that day, he didn't tell them to make sure there was a Gentile slave in the house. All right. He had to fix it because earlier his disciples were arguing about who was the greatest in the kingdom? My Lord. <laughs> so he took a towel. Amen. And there I was. I don't have a basin. Last time I did this, I sat Deacon Woods and Minister Valley Battle on that front pew. I got a basin of water and 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 I washed their feet. And, and I got down on my knees. Yeah, right. I and I started wiping their feet. They, they, they didn't mind. Then I started wiping their feet with the towel yes, that I had around my waist. Right. Everybody in the house got the point. This is why I'm
himself of no reputation. Taking the form of a bond servant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And coming in the likeness of men. All right. And being found in the appearance of a man. He humbled himself and became a man obedient to the point of death. Yeah. Even the death of the cross. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, let's remember that. As you take your towel this morning. Amen. Amen. Jesus knew. Amen. The competitive spirit. In the hearts of his disciples. Within a few minutes the men were disputing over which was the greatest. In the kingdom of God. And they were positioning themselves. And John asked him, when you get into your kingdom, would you do us a favor? Let one of us sit on your right hand and the other on your left. Now, the worst thing you can do in the church is go to positioning yourself. Amen. Everybody want a position. Amen. And everybody want a title. But you ought to distinguish the difference between having a title and taking on a title. Can I get witness? Amen. Anybody can be called president. Amen. But can you put on a president's title? Everybody can be called a chairman. But can you wear a chairman's you might talk to somebody to call you Lord and Master. Yes. But can you wear yes. a master's towel? Yes. Took a towel. He took a towel. Amen. With the, with, with the use of a towel, Jesus gave them an unforgettable lesson in humility. Yes. And by his actions, rebuke selfishness and the pride that they had in his heart. Yeah. Is anybody here with selfishness and pride in your heart? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Church, I, I, I can't wait till I get to the house. 
because they were still positioning themselves for authority in the kingdom. So Jesus, amen, explained it to him. He gave, he had given them a lesson in humble service. An example, amen, they would follow later. Amen, you would think, they would think, amen, happiness as a result of serving others. It's not about what people do for you. Yeah. It matters yeah. what you do for yeah. your fellow man. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. It's not sitting down yeah. waiting for somebody to pat you oh, on so your yeah. back.
problem with Jews. And the major problem is attached to them. Judas didn't have what it takes to admit he was a Jew. He spent more time looking at what somebody else was doing. Talking about what somebody else ought to do. I recognize that he hadn't had a relationship with him. All but one of Jesus' disciples ended up learning the examples of the Tops. And when they learned the example of the Tops, they were able to understand what the Tower meant to their life. And as you go on into the book of Acts, you find out that they not only took a Tower, all of them except Judas wore their towels. Not only did they wear their towels, amen, they used their towels right. to the Lord. Amen. The eleven saw Jesus die. They witnessed his burial and he experienced his resurrection and his ascension. Because they were endowed with the indwelling Ah, uh, the Holy Spirit. They all took up a time. Let me tell you something. You can moan all you want. You can try all you want. But I'm going to tell you, you've been born again. The tower won't make sense to you. That's right. I'm going to tell you, give the no thanks to the Lord. As your first one says, you get all the power you want. And you'll never get nothing done. Yeah. And the reason why we can wear a tower. If we acknowledge Jesus Christ dying for our sins. And because we acknowledge Jesus Christ, amen, God endowed us. Can I say this? He said, He endowed us with the dwelling of His Holy Spirit. And it's not by my power, or by my might, but it's by God's Spirit. Yes. Thank the Lord. Amen. It's just hard to love everybody. Amen. But there's something on the inside. Yes. Amen. That make me love folks who don't love me. Yes. Can I get a witness? Yes. Amen. It's the Holy Ghost. Yes. So I ask today. Amen. I ask you today. I ask all of you. And thank you for doing it. And if you didn't do it today, get you one. Get one. You know what? I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this one because this is what we should have. And now listen. Don't get no cheap, raggedy top. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I mean, God, thank God you we want God to have our best. God deserves it. I got this one. It's all right. Thank you. It's all right. It's a word. But now, if you haven't gotten one, get one of your best towels. Maybe your favorite one. That's the word. Yeah, that's the word. Set it aside. And I think we might, we might frame it. I think we're trying to frame it up. Right, yeah. And put it, and put it, put it somewhere. I'm gonna, maybe it's in my office where I can look it over. Amen. So, Amen. Sometimes y'all life may be more than this. Yes. Yes. Y'all didn't get there. Did you get there? Yes. Sometimes life may be more than this. Yes. But if I can walk into my office and see this towel and say, oh, oh, oh. Yes. Jeremiah said, I, I, I quit. Y'all did y'all read? I ain't heard. I'm going to I'm going to take my robe off and put it in the closet. I ain't preaching no more. Then he went on to say, but your word is like a burning fire. Yes, it is. Shut up in I'll tell you what your towel will be. That's it. You know how to tell God what you did when you get to heaven. That's right. He got your record. That's it. It's recorded. That's right. Every thought, every deed is recorded. He won't ask you, well, what'd you do? No, baby. I don't even open your mouth. I challenge this morning, or the 
this year as a child. And this is part of me in that equipping you for ministry. And I've equipped all of you this morning. I've equipped you this morning. I've given you some equipment.
push the fight to the real meaning of success on their brain. You've got to erase what's already there. Amen. Thank you. 